Welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm John Galloway with the Oregon Environmental Council. So this evening we're going to be talking about homegrown Oregon biofuels. So you may have heard a lot in the news this year about biofuels, ethanol and biodiesel. It might leave you wondering, what are your choices when you go to the pump? What's good for the environment and what might not be so good? Tonight we're going to be talking with uh, two company leaders about biofuels that are produced right here in Oregon and hear from them about what actually does work and what's good for Oregon's economy and environment. Uh, first we have with us Mark Smith from Summit Foods and Summit Natural Energy and Ian Hill from Sequential Biofuels uh, based in Eugene, Oregon. And I want to ask you all about um, what consumers can do when they pull up to the pump. What are the choices that are available? And I think both of you have really interesting stories about how to actually turn trash into treasure. So taking waste products, waste food products, or maybe waste agricultural products, and actually turning them into transportation fuels that we can use. Ian, can you tell us a little bit about how Sequential is producing its fuels? Uh, sure, absolutely. Uh, sequential biofuels, um, we started a, in 2002, and we started actually as an environmental science uh, class the project uh, making biodiesel for ourselves. Uh, so we're a biodiesel processing company, Mark's an uh, ethanol uh, processing company, uh, just to differentiate that. Um, and uh, from that class project, we've graduated to build Oregon's first commercial biodiesel plant uh, with a one million gallon a year uh, capacity based largely on used cooking oil. So um, the oil that fries your fries when you go to Burgerville or the oil that was used to to cook kettle chips chips. We take that oil once food's been made with it and we turn it into cleaner burning uh, locally made biodiesel. Um, and then just recently we've, we've opened a new biodiesel production facility with a five million gallon a year annual capacity. And again, it's largely based on used cooking oil that's sourced here in Oregon. Um, but also we're starting to bring in some virgin oil from things like uh, canola grown in Eastern Oregon in rotation with wheat. Um, uh, with, with wheat for food and, and then also uh, camelina, which is grown in rotation with food crops um, or in between grapevine rows uh, in vineyards. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about what we do on the production side. That's great. Mark, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with uh, waste food products and what your visions are for actually making a usable transportation fuel out of that? Yeah, about four years ago, we start, We were looking into our energy costs were climbing, and we had uh, waste issues. What do we do with our waste products? From we're in the fruit and processing industry, and uh, so adding, uh, doing something with the sugar that sugars and breakdown products that we could turn it into something that's usable. And the more we explored it, it was a real good fit for our company. It was the same type of equipment that we would be using. It, it would utilize the waste stocks from our company. Then we would just go through the a fairly simple process of converting it into a, a wine, an alcohol, and then concentrating it. Uh, and, and it's grown. We found that we have many neighbors in the area with the same problem where they have uh, products that they want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we'll use those and make ethanol. That's great. That's great. So what's interesting, I think, about both of these stories is that we're, a lot of the, what has come up in uh, a lot of media stories that we've been reading and hearing about is that we're taking away from you know, food supplies by growing food crops to actually produce fuels. Um, and when we contrast that with what you all just described, I think we have a very interesting uh, way of looking at our transportation future and, and developing liquid fuels out of products that otherwise would, would, would be going to waste. Um, what does that mean in, in terms of, uh, of, of economic development uh, for Oregon uh, in terms of being able to pr produce jobs? What are you seeing from the, from the, side, of, uh, the side of your business um, that would suggest that this is, this is actually good for, for creating jobs here in Oregon? Okay. Well, um, our company and the umbrella uh, of companies that we that we operate, uh, we employ about 45 people, and those are all biodiesel related jobs. Um, I know that uh, the ethanol industry so far, and, and uh, I believe this this counts uh, your company as well, employs about uh, 60 people, and that's largely just in the processing area. So there may be 
more than that um, that are ancillary to it. Um, I understand that at the end of this year we will, with all of the biodiesel and ethanol production here in Oregon, we will have displaced about 150 million gallons of petroleum, thereby retaining about $300 million worth of uh, fuel dollars that you know, Oregonians are spending at the pump and have always gone, been exported out of the country. Instead of exporting out of the country, we're retaining those dollars and, and paying Oregonian salaries with those dollars uh, instead of sending that, that money largely overseas. Um, I think to date we're at a bit over $300 million again, but $300 million worth of investment in the biofuel industry here in Oregon. Uh, so those are investment dollars that are being spent here, that are being spent in construction, in buying materials, uh, in paying, uh, um, um, uh, paying salaries. Um, and, and being a part of the integrated economy. One of the things